Hey everybody, welcome to part two on how to cure a pork loin Canadian bacon style. That's the pork loin from part one. We just put it in our fridge and boom, two weeks later, there's a cured pork loin. Actually, I had an extra one that was already ready to go. And so that's what we're using for part two. But depending on the diameter of your pork loin will obviously determine how long you cure it. Usually it's between 14 to 21 days. And here's what we want to do. I want to do something a little different for this particular cure and drying. I want to, uh, look how gorgeous that looks. I want to do a test between uh, regular dry aging in the, in the drying chamber and uh, drying with aspergillus or rhizo or koji that has been inoculated on the outside of it. So one of these pork loins is just going to be wrapped and hung to dry with a little bit of penicillium naugeovensis to protect it from the elements. And the other one is gonna have koji rice sprinkled all over it with koji spores. And, um, and we're gonna incubate that in an incubation chamber for roughly 48 to 60 hours. And so what I'm doing now is I'm preparing the rice and all we're doing is we're adding some koji spores to the rice and this is going to be kind of like the mix that I pull from. So that'll, that'll be, that's way more than I need for this project. But I'm going to make some koji rice later and I'll use that up. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, some really finely ground uh, rice flour and I'm going to coat the entire pork loin. And what this is going to do is this is going to give food to the koji. And so right now I'm just sprinkling the koji with the rice flour that's been in, that I mixed here a minute ago. So I've got rice flour first, and then koji with rice flour next, and I coat the whole thing. And just like the other piece of loin, I wanna weigh this, because I wanna get a green weight, basically my starting weight, because uh, I need to know how much uh, weight we're gonna lose. And so I'm starting at 879, my target is 571. I wanna lose about 35%. And so instead of going into the drying chamber, we're gonna put it into an incubation chamber, and all I'm doing is I'm just going to elevate it a little bit with some water. And uh, I'm using a, a cheesecake mold, but uh, that's only just to, you know, raise the uh, raise that cling film up just a little bit higher. And I want to make sure I give my edges a little bit of space so that some air can circulate through. And that's it. It's pretty simple. I want to maintain high humidity. I want to maintain about 90 degrees um, temperature because it's a really lean cut. If it was a fattier cut, I'd probably try to incubate it at about 80 maybe or 79. But this is what it's gonna look like. I've got some thermometers in there and uh, that's just to give me the ambient reading of the temperature within the chamber. And so I'm able to monitor that from, from in my house. And here's the other pork loin. So um, I, I actually had some collagen sheets that I've been wanting to use up that I uh, actually forgot I had. And when I was going through my casings, I realized um, I had I had a couple options. I had some casings that were way too big, I had some cheesecloth, or I had these really cool collagen sheets that I've never used before. So this is me using those for the very first time. And basically you just wrap it around and as the moisture uh, escapes the, the protein, then that collagen sort of sticks, sticks to it. And so we'll see what happens. It was actually really easy to work with. Uh, this is Mold 600. I've mixed it with a little bit of water and uh, Penicillium naugeovensis. That's all it is. Actually, I let it bloom for a little while. And so um, it, I left it on the counter for about six or eight hours. And now I'm just brushing the entire, the entire muscle. Uh, just like that. And so at this point, we're gonna sanitize the torch and get that thing. I've got a couple little air pockets I wanna get out of it. And we wanna make sure that there's no unwanted bacteria being introduced to this piece of meat. As it smells amazing, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait. And welcome to the chamber. So as you can see, my chamber has not been in use. We are, we are putting some stuff back into it. And this is the a first go. Matter of fact, if you're watching this video and you're into charcuterie and you've always been curious on how to make a certain thing, leave it in the comment section below and I'll make a video on how to make it. As you can see, my chamber is wide open and I'll probably make some Genoa here coming up. I'll make some Copas coming up. 
All right, so let me tell you what I've got going on. This is a, uh, a, a thermostat, and I've got it set at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've got some preset variables. So when it goes uh, below 86, then my smoker, which is plugged in right here, kicks on, and it brings the temperature up to where I want it. This is the hygrostat, which controls the humidity. And basically all I have is an 88% value, so I want my humidity at 88%, and anytime it drops below whatever value I set it at, then my humidifier kicks on. And this is after about 36 hours. And as you can see, the humidifier immediately kicks on. It actually looks really cool and uh, starts to put a lot of humidity into this box. And I've got an actual update for what I ended up having to do later on, but I'll post a different video for that, which uh, turned that chamber into something really, really great. But as you can see, 36 hours into it, the mold is really starting to grow. I didn't like the water aspect at the bottom, and so I removed that, and now we're basically 60 hours. So the next day, um, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. There's uh, a, an interesting life cycle when it comes to koji. And as you can see, that you see the yellow spots on the, uh, on the mold itself. And so what happens is, after about 48 hours, koji is going to want to continue its life cycle. And if you leave it in there for much longer, um, 60 plus, 72 hours, then it's going to want to go to pollen. And that's what it's doing right now. And so it's at its very first stage of telling me, hey, it's about time for me to go to the next step. And so I probably left it in there for a little bit longer than I should have. And as you could see, the type of grating that I had it on caused the, uh, the spores to sort of lock itself in. But no big deal, I was able to pull them off of the grating and I'm just gonna kind of puzzle piece this thing back together and see if, uh, if we can just go ahead and finish up this process. So using this uh, collagen sheet, we're gonna do the same exact thing. I've already weighed it, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, tie it up. So I'm gonna trust this up and hang it next to the other pork loin. And now one has Penicillium nalgivensis. This one has Koji, or Aspergillus oryzae. And uh, we're gonna see the difference. So mark your calendars. Episode three, or, or part three to this, is gonna be kind of the conclusion. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Today's video was about charcuterie, but tomorrow's video, well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. We thank you for sticking around. If you've made it to the end, give it a great big thumbs up if you like this video. And if you got any suggestions, give me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I read every comment and I reply to every one of them. So look forward to seeing you in the next video and I'll talk to you soon.